Thank you to the American Philatelic Society for their support in the making of this video. For information on membership and APS services, visit stamps.org. Okay, I don't really keep these in a fancy metal briefcase such as this, but stamp collectors can be particular when selecting which philatelic tongs or tweezers they use with their collection. With the right pair, you can work through an assortment of stamps with ease and precision, or navigate through the very tight strips on a stockbook page without damaging the stamps. So let's talk about what makes a good set of philatelic tongs or tweezers and see what all the fuss is about. The first thing to address is, are these tongs or tweezers? And that really depends on where you're from or where you live. For instance, the British primarily use the word tweezers while the Americans use the word tongs. Neither are wrong. When considering the hobby, they are both referring to a tool or instrument that is appropriate for handling stamps. And flatless around the world will prefer one word over the other, while some will actually use both words uh, just to differentiate between the different types of tips that the tools have. For instance, the longer pointier ones will be associated with tweezers, while the rounder ones will be considered tongs. This is important because they can be listed under either name. Uh, British-based companies such as Stanley Gibbons and Prince sell tweezers and seldom refer to them as tongs, whereas an American brand such as Showguard sells tongs. So when looking to purchase a pair online, perhaps try both keywords in your search. You may just find additional listings depending on who is selling them. I grew up calling them tweezers, so when I hear them referred to as tongs, I think of either salad tongs or grilled tongs, which are absolutely useless for trying to pick up stamps. But at the same time, the word tweezers can be confused with its cosmetic cousin, the smaller, sharper ones that are used for plucking eyebrows. Again, these are not appropriate for handling stamps. So it's recommended to not use tweezers from the cosmetic aisle of your standard store. We'll discuss what the right ones are shortly. Also, I'll be using both words interchangeably throughout this video. Now, enough about the nomenclature. Or is it nomenclature? Hmm. The factors to consider when it comes to these philatelic instruments are torque or leverage, surface area, and friction. All of these influence the ease of use, precision, and the risk of damaging the stamp. And so there are different types of philatelic tweezers to choose from. But it ultimately comes down to preference and what you feel comfortable with using. And that can be based on familiarity and what you have used in the past. Now, quick disclaimer, if you're familiar with this channel, then you'll know that I'm not an expert. I'm learning as I go. And for the longest time, I was using these. They're very inexpensive, sold as hobby tweezers from any online retailer. A set of four that you can find quite easily. They are made of stainless steel. Each of the four has a different head or tip. For all of season one and most of season two, I actually used this set and they do get the job done. I've actually used them in some extreme philatelic situations, such as using a pair while swimming in the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. And the stamp survived to tell the tale. I've traveled extensively with these tweezers, using them with my albums and of course outdoors, which is not the typical use of stamp collecting tweezers. So I might not be an expert, but I am an experienced user of cheap tongs. If you're just starting out and you're looking to get a cheap set, these will do, but they're not great. They do corrode, even though they're stainless steel, and they bend out of shape really quickly. They're standard hobby tweezers, so they're not really made with stamps in mind. And while they are flat tipped, they still risk causing damage to the stamps. I didn't actually get my first pair of professional philatelic tweezers until I was at Stampex in London during the filming of season two. That's when I bought a set of Prince tweezers. Oh, notice tweezers. And that was a game changer. Okay, so let's talk about the different types you can get. Stem collecting tongs or tweezers primarily come in two sizes, a junior four inch or 10 centimeter version and a larger professional six inch or 15 centimeter version. There are also four common tips, that being of the pointed tip, round tip, spade, and the angled spade variety. As I mentioned earlier, leverage and torque are factors to consider when looking for a set of philatelic tongs or tweezers, and that is influenced by the type of metal that the tongs are made out of, as well as the size. 
Most professional tongs or tweezers are made out of a nickel-clad mild steel. They require a small amount of force or torque from your fingers to close them, but they also maintain their shape really well and spring back. This is particularly noticeable when you use a cheaper set of tongs made out of stainless steel. They require a lot more force to close them, and they don't maintain their shape well. And when considering leverage, the smaller the tweezers are, the closer to the fulcrum or the point where the two blades join, and therefore the more force is required from your fingers. The larger tweezers, of course, allow you to push a lesser force further away from the joint. Now, why is this important? Well, the action of picking up a stamp with a pair of tweezers creates an isometric muscle contraction in your forearm. Keeping your muscle in the static tense state while you clamp down on stamps will eventually lead to pain. So the less force required to close the tweezers, the better. If you are like me and spend considerable lengths of time working with your collection using tongs or tweezers, you'll want to consider two things. Firstly, don't go with stainless steel tongs, rather the more professional nickel clad tongs, and go with a larger pair. Don't go with the smaller size. Even if you're a younger collector and you're serious about philately, it's almost always better to go for the larger pair. They may be a bit heavier, but they are easier to use and better to handle your stamps with. I mentioned nickel coated tongs, well they're the most common. Nickel prevents corrosion, doesn't react to human sweat, easier to clean and keeps a good shine. But you can also get it in colors, these two are from Davo and I have a red and blue one here. And you can oftentimes get them plated in gold instead. Gold plated tongs, now these are amazing. I just couldn't resist getting a pair of gold plated tweezers for this video. It does make you wonder though. Wouldn't this make a really cool philatelic award? Welcome back to the first annual Golden Tweezers Awards. For the category of Best Philatelic Video featuring a donkey, this year's Golden Tweezer Award goes to Graham from Exploring Stamps with the Aruban Stamp Video. Anyway, the reason for gold plated is more to do with allergies. There are nickel allergies out there, so if you have a nickel allergy, then gold is oftentimes a good alternative. It's also a good choice if you're looking to add some bling to your philatelic style. Okay, now let's talk about grip, uh, surface area, and that is where the different shaped tips come into play. When I'm talking about surface area, I'm talking about the amount of the stamp surface that is being held by the tip of the tweezers. The larger the surface or contact area between the tweezers and the stamp, the more dispersed the force from your fingers is on the stamp. And this contributes to how well supported the stamp is when picking it up and holding it. Now, with the help of the APS, we ran a survey on social media, polling collectors' preferences and seeing which tip is the most preferred. The votes were spread fairly evenly for each of the four types, with some really great comments. Often came down to what someone was familiar with because that's the type they always had. Now, when the Philatelic Traders Society, the PTS, ran the same poll for their dealers, they almost had 100% preference for the pointed tip, which is interesting, but it'll make sense in a minute. The angled spade has the largest surface area, with even some of the neck providing support to hold the stamp. The straight spade comes second, the round tip comes third, and finally, the pointed tip has undoubtedly the least surface area. This has a positive and negative when holding a stamp. The positive is that you can clearly see more of the stamp when holding it. Dealers sorting through thousands of stamps will get quite irritated if they have to move their tongs around to get the full visual of a stamp, whereas the pointed tip gives them the most visual at a single glance. The negative aspect about the tweezers is that they're applying all the force in a smaller area of the stamp. This elevates the risk of tearing the stamp or damaging it if handled poorly. Now, dealers are pretty skilled at handling these, so that helps to mitigate that risk. For the more casual users such as myself, I would probably feel more comfortable holding my more expensive stamps with a larger surface area such as the spade. Also, if you find yourself in a windy situation while handling a stamp, uh, the spade would probably be a better choice. Larger surface area, better grip, and less likely to tear the stamp. If you find yourself in that situation. That windmill was in such a windy place. Okay, so the other element is friction. 
When trying to select a stamp in an album or a pile of stamps, it's much easier to slide the tweezer blade underneath a stamp when it has less surface area. The smaller the surface area of the tweezer blade, the easier it is to get under a stamp. Just think of two different types of bows, one with a wide bow and the other with a narrow streamlined bow. The wide bow is exposed to more water and creates a larger bow wave, while the streamlined thinner bow creates less of a wave and leaves the water a little less disturbed. The same is kind of true when it comes to tweezers, and this is where dealers significantly prefer the thinner tips. They get under stamps without pushing them on a table or a pile of stamps, or causing them to bend when trying to pick them out of a stock book. Whereas the wider spade or round tip interact with a larger area of the stamp surface, overwhelming the friction between the stamp and the surface it rests on, and are more susceptible to pushing the stamp and even bending it. This is the reason why dealers tend to refer to anything that's not a thin pointed tip as a perf killer. Perf killers. But at the same time, these pointed tweezers are affectionately known as lethal tips because, well, they can draw blood if you accidentally poke yourself or drop them on your feet. And they have been known to poke holes in stamps uh, because of the sharper tip. Lethal tip. Okay, so let's put speed and precision to the test, measuring the amount of damage incurred and the time it takes for me to move 32 stamps from this side of the stock book page to the other, placing them on the table of course first, but doing so as fast as I can. And in this case, I'm gonna use the curved spade tweezers. And I will be using a pair of pointed tip tweezers. Okay, so as expected, the pointed tweezers did faster, uh, 22 seconds faster than the curved spade. And from a damage standpoint, both pairs of tweezers had some casualties. The pointed tip had two casualties versus the curved spade with three. So it seems that the pointed tip wins this round. It definitely feels like it glides a lot better through the stock book pages, as well as when the stamps were piled up on the table. Am I saying that the long point tip tweezers are the best? Well, not all the time. When it comes to my more valuable stamps, I'm gonna still stick with the curved spade or the regular spade tip tweezers, mainly because I'm comfortable with them, uh, there's less risk of tearing the stamp, and I've used them for a while. Of course, when I'm handling my more valuable stamps, I'm taking my time with them, I'm not involving them in a speed round such as this. But it does make sense why a dealer would prefer the point tip. They are the most efficient of all the tweezers. But remember, dealers spend a significant amount of time with stamps. They are skilled tweezer tongue users. Just get comfortable at whatever pair you select, or maybe choose a couple different types that you can get comfortable with and switch between. Just a quick note, most tongs or tweezers come in these plastic covers or sleeves, and these are fine. They keep the tweezers stored well and protect them. But you can, of course, upgrade to a leather case, such as this one from Showguard, a more durable alternative uh, that again adds a little bit of style. Or you could, of course, get a metal case such as this, or not. One final thing, I noticed on a number of my tweezers and tongs the word Zollingen. They're on my Showguard tweezers as well as my Prince ones, and I've seen it on a few other brands. So what or who is Zollingen? It's not really a question of what or who, but where? Zollingen is a place, and historically it's where the better tweezers and tongs come from. Zollingen is located in western Germany, near the Rhine River. It's known as the City of Blades. The City of Blades. This piqued my curiosity, so I went there. During the medieval ages, Zollingen became known for the superb quality of swords, knives, and other blades produced by the highly skilled swordsmiths in the town. Kings and knights in Europe obtained the best swords from the city. So I visited the old Greyfriard Market Square, still characterized with half timber housing and cobblestone streets, a beautiful little part of the city that today has an old monastery converted into a blade museum. The 
connection to history that this city has with producing the finest in steel blades and having perfected a quality that sets standards around the world helped to define Germany from an early age as a leader of precision craftsmanship. While the sword making secrets were eventually taken to England in the 1600s, Zorligen has remained a leader in quality blade production. Scissors, knives, cutlery and tweezers are manufactured there such as these. To have the name Zoligan on an item such as this, it needs to meet the high standards that Zoligan represents and they must be made in the city itself. Take a look at the ones you currently have, they might just have the name Zoligan on them. Just think about it, to have your philatelic instrument of choice crafted in the same place where knights and kings got their best swords, the city of blades, don't tell me that's not cool. Isn't it amazing that there is something to learn about every aspect of this hobby? Thank you all for watching. Let me know which tweezers or tongs you prefer in the comment section and why. Until next time, happy exploring.